And with Hurricane Ian, the big story tonight isn't just those winds. It's also the storm surge that some places along the coast of the Gulf are going to be measuring in feet. Paul Gross is back with us now live. And Paul, help us get a sense of just how bad this storm surge is going to be there. Yeah, hi there. You know, storm surge is the most destructive, but probably the least understood part of a hurricane. Yes, wind is involved, but the important component is water. So let's take a look at what storm surge Line on part of the storm on the right side of that storm, you have wind that is blowing toward the shore. That wind is blowing water into the shoreline, and of course, the tides go in and out. So, at high tide in particular, you have a big surge of water that comes inland. The stronger the wind, obviously, the stronger the wind the higher the surge of water and moving water is very very destructive not to mention the inundation that occurs farther and farther inland now let's come back out here live this is a category four almost a borderline category five storm the projected storm surge is 10 to 20 feet in the worst areas now take a look at this kiosk here we measured this kiosk this morning this kiosk here is 12 feet tall that's a 12 foot tall kiosk. So think about this, a surge of water, a big bubble of water is gonna be pushed inland that is higher in many areas than this kiosk. And that is again, very, very destructive. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you very much, Paul. We appreciate it. And we wanna get back out live to Florida's Gulf Coast right now. Vic Michelucci live in Northport, Florida for us right now, which is about halfway between Tampa and Fort Myers. We checked with you at four o'clock. You are outside that structure. It's a category five structure. It looks like you obviously needed to get indoors, Vic. We tried to step outside for you, but the roof literally came off of the fire station that we are in. We're gonna show you, we've got what are apparently storm it had been getting ripped off, uh, just debris coming by, hitting the side, hitting the bays here of this fire station, which is supposed to have been built for a Category 5 hurricane. So sorry if we sound a little bit hurried. Uh, the firefighters are inside patching up leaks, uh, bolting down windows uh, as, as rain and wind is coming into the actual fire station, which is where the first responders relatively small city are, are home based during this very difficult time. Uh, this is an incredibly powerful storm, 155 mile an hour winds sustained. Korea, some of these guys. We're going to take it from you, Vic, because we're obviously having some signal issues. It's really important to note that obviously he's in a fire hall and I was texting with some folks down in Naples. Obviously, I've got some friends and family there. You know, they were calling in for rescues. They can't rescue. The fire halls are all flooded. And, you know, it's just so frightening because you turn to rescue crews and at this time you cannot be rescued. So we will check back with Vic a little later um, in terms of what the situation is in Northport. Meantime, FEMA moving people and resources into place to respond immediately to the hurricane. The agency already has a million liters of water, meals, cots, generators, and fuel in Florida. Hundreds of FEMA workers are on the ground ready for search and rescue. Florida's governor activated 5,000 National Guard troops, and the Pentagon says more are on standby in neighboring states. As the storm passes and we see where the needs are, we are just going to continue to move people in. Florida's governor says 40,000 linemen and power workers are ready to get the lights back on just as soon as that danger passes there.